Hello everyone. Over the next 20 minutes or so, I want to share my thoughts around where marketing is headed into the future and how marketing will be done in that future. And this I call it as quantum marketing. Now, if you look at the world around us today, there is a deluge of new technologies that are coming at us. Whenever in the past, there were technological advancements, marketing will get altered. Now, what we are seeing is it's not just one or two technologies that are actually going to change our game, but more than two dozen technologies. It's literally a deluge of technologies or a tsunami of technologies. You've got artificial intelligence, augmented reality, virtual reality, the whole thing is now being called as metaverse. You've got blockchains, autonomous driving vehicles, internet of things, smart speakers, which is part of internet of things. You got wearables, the, the 3D printing, 5G telecommunications, two dozen technologies that are coming. Each one of them is powerful enough to individually alter the game for people's lives, both good and bad. And that has got a direct implication on marketing and how marketers have to do marketing. Now, this is probably the single biggest confluence of technology. So for example, if you look at the mid 1990s, there were two technological revolutions that have changed how marketing was being done and marketing got pushed into the next paradigm. In mid 1990s, one was the birth of the internet. And the second one was the advancement of data analytics into the world of marketing in a highly democratized fashion. Likewise, if you look at 2007, there was a significant advancement that happened. One was the launch of iPhone, which changed the game in terms of connected devices forever. And number two, the birth and scaling of social media platforms, starting with Facebook. So between social media platforms and the smartphones, our lives have completely gone, or I would say good or bad, but it has got a direct impact on marketing and marketers had to reinvent. So for example, when we moved uh, to this, what I call currently the fourth paradigm that we are in, that was ushered in by mobile and the social media platforms. We had now mobile uh, marketing, you have got influencer marketing, you got location-based marketing, you got social media marketing, all these things have come, which didn't exist before 2007. And before that, if you see, with the advent of internet, we had digital marketing, we had data-driven marketing, we had precision targeting, measurement of ROI. So each time a couple of technologies come in, marketing advances and it sort of reinvents itself. And that's happened four times till now. And this is the time when we are about to enter the fifth paradigm ushered in by nearly 24 technologies. So the extent of disruption is going to be totally, totally mind blowing with these uh, technologies. Along with technology, we have got data. Now today, everything is actually connected, right? At your home, if you look around, your thermostats to toothbrushes are connected. Your coffee makers to commodes are connected. And everything is getting connected so much. It's like the, literally the internet of things. The thing that you have to understand in this context is every connected device on the one hand is a device for consumer engagement or consumer interaction. And therefore it's a marketing device in that sense, or it's even a device for commerce. On the other hand, each one of these devices is fitted with some kinds of sensors. The sensors gather data and they transmit them somewhere into the cloud. Already today, we feel that we are swimming in too much of data than uh, we don't know what to really do with. But this is nothing compared to the kind of data deluge that we are going to witness. It's going to be extraordinary amount of data that's being gathered. Now that's a double-edged sport. The bad about the double-edged is that uh, it's further concerns for con consumer privacy. Uh, a feeling of being uh, monitored or intruded upon a lot more uh, and more regulations and uh, which I think as a consumer I would greatly support uh, and it's also a question of data security How, where uh, are the vulnerabilities that people can uh, get into the systems and hack and uh, compromise the data the opportunities will be far higher but on the other side the insights that you can get from consumers 
the insights that you can actually action and take those actions in real time, it's going to be pretty fascinating. Now, this is the second part of it. Now, let's look at the third part, which is the cultural shifts which are happening at massive scale around the world, whether it is the uh, aspects of societal uh, uh, you know, exclusion or inclusion, like Black Lives Matter, the LGBTQ, et cetera, or it is the rise of nationalism across multiple countries. These are not just happening in an isolated situation right here in the United States, but this is a global phenomena. There are tectonic shifts that are happening in our culture. So between the tech tsunami, the data deluge, and the tectonic shifts in the culture, life is going to be very different and marketing has to absolutely reinvent itself. Now, the amount of disruption is going to be unprecedented. This is across the entire value chain of marketing and every aspect of marketing. Today, for example, when you look at insights, we gather insights in a particular way, which mostly is not really the smartest way to get, gather insights into consumers' way of thinking because most of consumer actions are subconscious. And what we ask them to do is to give a logical, analytical reasoning as to why they feel something or how they feel something. Whereas in reality, if things are in subconscious, the conscious mind is not able to give you the right answers about the subconscious. So we need to look at the methodologies very differently. Do we have neuro methods of understanding uh, what goes on in consumers' minds and hearts and be able to leverage that? And there are so much of advancements that have taken place in the space that it's, it's fascinating. Now, that's just one aspect of it. Advertising, as we know, is going to be completely uh, uh, reinvented because advertising, I, I just keep telling this to my team to be very provocative, advertising, as we know it, is dead. Who likes to sit in front of a video? Like, for example, I'm sitting in front of a YouTube video and I'm watching something nice, uh, some animal video or some Bollywood songs or whatever. Every three minutes or every five minutes, there is an interruption. And I feel very annoyed and I'm looking for the skip button. And now they are introduced two videos that I have to suffer. This is not good consumer experience. Consumers are saying that we are happy without your stupid intrusion. They're putting us now ad blocks. They're moving to ad-free environment. How can we hold on to those same traditional methods, particularly when there are 5,000 messages that are trying to cut through and gain consumers' attention in less than eight seconds, which is the span of attention of consumers these days. Uh, every aspect of advertising is going to change. Loyalty, for example, we spend hundreds of billions of dollars every year, but the concept of loyalty is not actually sustainable. A vast number of people, more than 70%, have answered that in their personal lives, in their personal relationships, they are not loyal. They have cheated. Now, as brands, are we really smart enough to assume that consumers will be loyal to us if they are not loyal in their own personal lives? and we give some miles cash back or points and expect them to be loyal, it's not gonna happen. So in any case, the point being that every aspect of marketing will have to be revisited and we have to reinvent, and that is what I call as quantum marketing. It's going to be a total reimagination of marketing. And it, uh, in fact, the book that I have written called Quantum Marketing is all about a kind of a playbook of how this future has to be navigated uh, very effectively. Now, one of the important aspects of uh, the uh, quantum marketing is multi-sensory marketing, which is what I'll focus on for the next few minutes. So when you look at multi-sensory marketing, we know that people are blessed with all the five senses, most of the people, right? Uh, the sense of sight, sound, taste, uh, smell, and uh, touch. Now, I'll give you some examples of how we are trying to bring them to life in the context of MasterCard. So let's take the, uh, the sense of site first. Now, as I said, 5,000 messages being bombarded at consumers every single day and cutting through a very narrow uh, window of uh, attention from the consumer's point of view. Now, when we looked inwards at our own portfolios, what we have seen is we have got literally hundreds and hundreds of brands. And we said, really, can we get consumers register and remember these brands much less act on each one of these brands independently? Is it a sensible uh, approach at all? And first thing, so what I did is, I said, kill all the brands, but for one. So the only brand now that we have got is this. Now this brand has some unique, interesting uh, challenges. It seemed to be a little obsolete, a little outdated. The colors are a little down market. 
the uh, alphabets and the wordings are uh, not looking from uh, being futuristic or contemporary. So what we said is we'll have to actually redesign that. And we worked for uh, you know, literally a couple of years with our agency. Uh, at that point in time, we came up with a design which we feel is terrific. Uh, go to the next slide, please. So this is the design. Now, if you see the red and the yellow colors, they are not the same as in the previous slides because what we discovered is slight changes in the shades, even within the same color, can have a profound impact on the perception. Literally, we were trying to do research into color and the effect of color on people's minds, on their thinking, on their emotions, and on their feelings. Fast forward, we dropped the name MasterCard altogether from our name, and we have got now a symbol brand because symbols are better received and registered by the mind than words. Words have to go through the cognitive part of the brain, whereas symbols go through the system one part of the brain or system one type of thinking, which is more intuitive and it's more reflexive and so on. So this is where we have gone to. And what we also saw that uh, is that people have a strong recognition. 84% of people actually recognize this uh, logo that you are seeing on the uh, screen, even without the name MasterCard written. And we wanted to advance it to the next level. And we have created a complete design system, which is incorporated into everything that we do. So as you can see on the screen, it's like, um, it's suggestive of the interlocking circles that we have got. And subconsciously, it keeps reinforcing the brand and it really makes a difference to how people perceive the brand. The good news is this is all giving us a terrific positive momentum. And MasterCard has moved in the last few years from something like number 87 in brand Z to being now a top 10 brand in the world on the one hand, and also in the United States, it's at number eight. And in interbrand rankings, we have been rated as one of the fastest growing brands. In fact, the fastest growing in 2019 and one of the fastest growing brands in 2020. And the trajectory keeps continuing and we are uh, you know, moving in the right direction. So it gives us a lot of validation of the kind of things that we are doing, not just from these external rankings, but a ton of studies that we do internally with our consumers as well as with our uh, customers. So moving on, the next sense that we have got is the sense of sound. Interestingly, I still remember distinctly the jingles that I have heard in my childhood. And that is the power of sound that can give you lasting memories and they can leave you lasting impressions. So we said today, if you look at all the uh, spectrum of uh, the brands which are out there and how are they using sound, we it was very clear to me that there is not a single brand which is doing a very comprehensive, holistic, scientific uh, job end to end. So we said that we will go ahead and try to create our own playbook. And we started doing intense amount of research into the science of sound and how sound and people interact with each other and how sound really uh, results in emotions being either generated or amplified. I, and it's, it's amazing uh, actually to see uh, how, what kind of an impact that sound can bring to the field of marketing and within the context of brands. So we created uh, MasterCard Sonic brand uh, and worked with some of the top artists and musicologists and musicians and record labels everywhere. And uh, so we have come up with uh, uh, our architecture, which is a 10 layer uh, architecture for the uh, Sonic brand that we have created. So take a look at this video, which actually talks about the DNA of MasterCard uh, sound or Sonic brand. The MasterCard Sonic DNA is built around core brand melodies that make the brand uniquely recognizable. Brand riffs function as the connecting tissue for the elements of the DNA. The brand chords provide additional layers to enrich compositions. And finally, the brand vocalization that adds a relatable human element to the DNA. Together, these ingredients make up the sonic DNA of MasterCard.
you get the sense of how uh, this particular uh, Sonic brand is evolving. And to, in order to make it more popular, we try to incorporate our Sonic into songs, uh, which are in pop songs, literally like, and I'll give you three samples of them quickly. Go ahead and please play the three uh, tunes. Hey, get it, get it, get it. Uh, I love what you bring. You like streaming what a clank. Yeah. Put yourself beside me, come and drench me with your rain. Okay. Yeah, I'm a call. Oh, je t'aime mon baby. Je te hache de bzef, Zina. Oh, je t'aime mon baby. Oh, oui, beaucoup d'amour, Nina. Oh, je t'aime mon baby. Je Right, so you get the sense of it. The idea is when the melody is released into the public through regular songs, that's when the registration happens a lot and the attribution then follows between this is the melody, this is MasterCards. Uh, and you know that's how we uh, envisage it. The good thing is we have already become world's number one audio brand for two years in a row. And the songs that we are releasing, for example, the recent one we did it in uh, Latin America, has gone on to be top of the charts at number one slot in six countries and a top 20 across the entire region. So this is being replicated across different regions of the world and we are pretty pleased about it. Moving on to the next sense, which is the sense of taste. Uh, and I'll play a video which is pretty self-explanatory. So please go ahead and play the video. Food is how we connect with each other, share our stories, and explore our world. How many times has a great meal become the start of something priceless? Culinary is the leading driver of travel spend and is the number one passion point for female consumers. So our efforts in this space are extraordinary. We've created hundreds of priceless tables worldwide. Each one has been unique. All have been unforgettable. Through Priceless.com, we invite our cardholders on epic, epic Epicurean adventures. Our culinary journey continues with MasterCard Bistro, an immersive, interactive, first-of-its-kind experience reaching affluent travelers at Rome International and partnering with Le Fooding and Michelin to shine a light on new up-and-coming restaurants. And no feast for the senses is complete without something sweet. Priceless by La Durée an edible work of art that fuses two original flavors, the taste of passion and the taste of optimism to stimulate your senses and inspire you to start something priceless. So we launched our most recent fine dining restaurant uh, in uh, Brazil, uh, in Sao Paulo, just uh, this last week. Uh, and the whole idea is how do you give immersive experiences to consumers. Uh, and these experiences are available only if you have a MasterCard and therefore start, start getting those uh, strong associations. Moving on to the next sense, which is the sense of uh, smell. Uh, go ahead and please uh, place the video, play the video. So this is something which we have launched and uh, pretty excited about uh, to really give that kind of, a, uh, again, immersive experience in the context of uh, smell. So if you go to your MasterCard Experience Center, you will smell this. You will have this fragrance available uh, through priceless.com for purchase, and then it will be also available at some of the high-end departmental stores and airport duty-free shops and so on and so forth. 
So it's a very different adventure that we have got as far as uh, the uh, sense of smell is concerned. That brings me to the last part of it, which is the sense of touch. Take a look at this video and hopefully it will again be very self-explanatory. Please take a look. Good girl. I was born legally blind. For millions of visually impaired people, paying with a card can be a challenge. Credit cards used to have raised numbers and now they're unfortunately losing that tactileness. Which one is my credit card? Now I have to get somebody else to go through my cards to pick out this one. I've been in situations where all of the store clerks are just standing in a circle waiting for me to figure out where my card is. It can be exhausting. But what if cards could be identified by touch? Huh. Oh, wow. This is wonderful. <laughs> Introducing Touch Card from MasterCard. Three distinctly shaped notches to help people tell the difference. Okay, we have an indent here. It's like got uh, notches. All three of them have notches. Yeah, I'll be able to tell my cards apart. Developed in partnership with Idenia, Visions, and the Royal National Institute of Blind People. This touch card is going to change my whole approach to the way I shop. But just little things like that can go a long way as far as bringing independence to a blind person. Inclusive by design and a step forward for the entire industry. Because a world designed for all of us is priceless. Just a little notch is huge progress. Right, so this is how we are trying to bring all the five senses to life uh, in different contexts and in different ways. Uh, so multi-sensory is some is a very important aspect of the future of marketing, particularly in a world that is full of clutter, overload, and consumers are simply drowning uh, with so many messages and so on. We are trying to find out new ways to cut through and engage. Uh, so that's what, in fact, I have tried to capture, uh, as I mentioned in my book, uh, which went on to become a Wall Street Journal uh, bestseller, and I feel very good about it. And uh, so look forward to hopefully engaging with you all at some point in time. And uh, you've got on the screen uh, my social media handles and hope to connect with at least some of you. Uh, and uh, I wish you all, uh, you know, safe times ahead. Thank you so very much.